This is the month of Dragon Ball Super. A collab with Fortnite, Frieza gets a new transformation, and now Frieza also makes his appearance in Boruto. But all jokes aside, welcome everyone to this month's chapter review of Boruto Chapter 72. So funny enough, I was excited to see what things Amato would reveal to us since I assumed that's what was going to happen and compare what I got right and wrong in my theory this chapter, but it turns out I was neither right or wrong because this chapter had almost nothing new with Amato. Instead, this chapter was primarily focused on Borto and Code. Well, mostly code. So the topics we will be discussing based off of this chapter are all in the description. There are timestamps in case any of you are interested, but before we really dive deep into the chapter itself, I'm going to bring up this connection that I think at this point is obvious, and that this arc has some heavy Dragon Ball Z inspirations. I'm not the first one to point this out, but it really does seem like Ada and Damon are inspired by Android 17 and 18, while of course, the new Tentails army is inspired by Frieza, design-wise. And some people may not like how Borto is taking such huge inspiration from another series and some may actually think it's really cool but personally it doesn't matter to me because the real issue I have isn't if Ikimoto decides to design these creatures as another character in another series the issue I have is that I don't want Boruto to be too heavily influenced by Dragon Ball in the sense that the power creep just keeps getting worse and worse I've already made a topic on this video but especially now that it's obvious Dragon Ball is a huge inspiration to this series I'm more worried than ever that Boruto and Kawaki are just going to keep getting stronger and stronger every arc and if that happens it becomes impossible for characters to stay relevant because this is a fighting shonen. If you're weak and can't keep up you get left behind. And yes the Boruto manga acknowledged how Sarda and Mitsuki desperately needed to get stronger in order to catch up. With Mitsuki I can definitely see his sage mode improving while also aiming to control it. After all Urushiki even stated that it was a scary transformation and that he couldn't let Mitsuki use it. So I think they have the blueprint done with sage mode and all they really need to do is upgrade it through Rochamaru. With Sarda however I don't think even a simple Mangekyo can catch her up to Boruto and Kawaki in the slightest. And now it may become an issue to where they wouldn't develop Sarda well enough for her new power up to not be an ass pull. Yes, Boruto and Kawaki grew stronger quickly, but the Karma Seal was first explored at the end of the Bandits arc, and is still being uncovered to this arc, to where I feel like Sarda won't get that same treatment of her new power up developing over a period of time, and will just feel like a rush so that they don't have to focus on her. What I really want to happen is that Boruto and Kawaki during the time skip are training to become complete experts with their karma seals and even when we get our first arc in the time skip it's not necessarily focused on them they can be a part of it but instead we get one to two arcs focused on building up Sarda and Mitsuki slowing down Boruto and Kawaki for just a little while to where once Sarda and Mitsuki are developed they can now move forward with everyone getting involved in some way I think that is this arc's biggest flaw characters being too strong too fast which leaves others behind in the dust all right now we can start discussing in this chapter and let's begin with Kawaki and Naruto because I didn't want to see it earlier but it really does seem like there could be a chance Kawaki forces Naruto's hand here and in my Amato theory I stated that Amato is going to offer Naruto an opportunity to get rid of Kawaki essentially sacrifice him in order to bring back his daughter which also somehow ties into his karma seal I stated that it may have something in relation with how Momoshiki kept Boruto alive and when analyzing Boruto after the revival Amato may have came to some conclusion that his plan is doable if he did something similar with Kawaki and his daughter. I stated that Naruto wasn't going to go through with it, but at this point with some possible foreshadowing of Naruto and Shikamaru's convo in chapter 67 about what to do with Kawaki, it kind of seems like eventually Naruto could have come to have inner hate for Kawaki, which yes, seems out of character for Naruto, but if Kawaki goes as far as to kill someone he loves, well again. I think this for sure is going to be the last straw. In this chapter, it is clear that now that he has his power back, his confidence is at a 10, meaning he truly thinks nobody can stop him if he decides to kill somebody. Even when Naruto told him to stop talking reckless, he continued on barking back at Shikamaru, ignoring Naruto's words. And usually, in the OG series or in Shippuden, how Naruto gets someone to fix up is through both his fist and words, but since he no longer has the power to contain Kawaki, it's becoming a huge problem for him and that is probably what Amato was holding hoping for. But as of now, I do think that Naruto still loves Kawaki, especially since that Boruto issue was resolved. But if Kawaki kills someone else who doesn't suffer from plot armor that is also close to Naruto, I think it'll be too much for him and this will drive Naruto to push him away, or at least simply accept that he doesn't see him as family. It's crazy to think that Naruto is getting some attention, even some small development here in Boruto, while my man Sasuke is just out here clapping Sakura cheeks and avoiding his daughter. The next topic I want to discuss is how this arc kinda has a predictable, but 
also non-predictable ending. In a way, it does seem like there are clearly a few small lists of characters that could very well die in this arc. I honestly never expected Code to get his get back this arc, but it seems that he's tired of getting beat up by everybody and is invading Konoha very soon. And with Code's warning to Shikamaru, it doesn't leave Shikamaru off the chopping block to die at the end of this chapter as well as Sasuke, who I think is more likely than anybody to get written off here. I think those two are more likely than anybody to get killed off, but aside from character deaths, I honestly don't even know if this arc is ending as soon as we think. I don't have the original tweet, but there was a leaker who claimed that the Boruto anime will start animating this code arc by the end of this year or early next year, but by that logic, in the span of 46 chapters, we're supposed to have this Tentails army fight and the model's explanation of the cyborgs all wrapped up by then? And let's say this next chapter decides the fate of Ada and Damon in Konoha while a model reveals everything. Absolutely no way we only get this giant fight wrapped up in the span of two chapters and a setup chapter as the last one before the time skip. A giant fight like this should be nothing less than three to four chapters at the minimum. And I'd even go as far as to say a model's long ass story plus plan reveal should be nothing more or less than two chapters, as well as a setup to the time skip being at least one to two chapters. So that's eight chapters at the maximum and six chapters at the minimum. Anything less than six and I will instantly feel like this arc had a rushed ending. So logically, I think this arc, if going the way I assume, could end around February to April, then in March to May is when the code arc starts being animated. Don't forget that the Kowaki arc didn't start until March, so six chapters left from now probably seems most likely. In one chapter, we all managed to have a different viewpoint on how this arc could end. And honestly, I'm pretty excited to know that we are getting a giant fight with everyone involved this time and not just a simple 1v1 or 1v2 with the same character. Now everyone in Konoha is getting their chance, even the other kids who are probably only going to feature in the anime. This is what I wanted. Everyone getting a chance to shine, even though I'm pretty sure they're all going to get their asses beat. But hey, better than Code barging in himself like an idiot and only Boruto and Kawaki facing off against him. That would be extremely predictable and an extremely anticlimactic ending to this arc. This ending it seems to be going towards is a thousand times better and thank God above all else, there are no new androids. I just want to point that out. These kids are about to have a wake up call after this war is over. Now speaking of this war, let's actually discuss the ways it could go. I'm sure Code is going for Naruto, Sasuke, Shikamaru, and Kawaki as they are on his kill list, so we're definitely going to get some action for those characters. I think at the very least, 100% Naruto and Kawaki are going to fight Code. I don't see Code in any way shape or form allowing Naruto to fight against Code on his own, but even then, that duo will still lose. They cannot defeat him. However, with these creatures being as powerful as they are, I don't know if Naruto, Sasuke, and Shikamaru would even prioritize Code over their families, who absolutely cannot handle those creatures even in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Those creatures are probably under Jigen level, so they are still really, really strong. And it goes back to this arc's ending in an unpredictable way to where you know who is most likely dying, but you also don't. The way it's looking, it doesn't seem like it's just going to be Shikamaru and Sasuke who get the boot, it could be anyone else at this point. I think Kawaki and Boruto can for sure handle the creatures as well as possibly Naruto and Sasuke, but everyone else? On top of how the difference between Code and them is that Code doesn't have to worry about anybody else because he's all alone. To where hell, even if Damon, Ada, and Amato show up, Damon needs to prioritize Ada's safety over everything. The fact that Ada and Damon may not show up until the fight is underway is why Konoha could possibly not know about this threat. You just don't know for sure how this could all go, and it kind of gives me the same feelings of the Kawaki arc in terms of unpredictability, not knowing for sure how this could all go. Will a model make it before Code invades? Will he show up after? Will a lot of people die? Will it just be a few? Is Code going to die? Or hell, will Konoha somehow reign victorious, but out of nowhere, two other Tsutsukis pop up in order to avenge their clan? But that topic will be for another video, and I think this is where I will end it for today, everyone. Pretty good chapter overall. I I think this could have been a lot worse writing wise if they chose cyborgs instead of those creatures. Thank god they didn't and the one thing the Naruto franchise has managed to do is keep the fights nothing less than an 8 out of 10. So moving forward, I'm having high expectations for how these few chapters could go. If you enjoyed this month's chapter review, I'd very much appreciate a like and a sub as I do this every month and break down topics based off of those chapters through smaller videos. Next up, I really want to discuss how every possible character death in this arc could go which should be arriving sometime next week. Thanks again everyone! And I'll see you on the next one.